70 years ago in Las Vegas, there was a legendary high stakes poker match which was shrouded in mystery and sprinkled with outrageous tales and even drew a curious onlooker that you will not believe. This is the story of the most controversial heads of poker match in history. In 1946, Benny Binion landed in the City of Lights, leaving behind the shadows of Dallas where his past was a mosaic of shady dealings, both rumored and proven. Teaming up with a partner, Benny seized control of the Las Vegas club and the neon lit streets soon felt the imprint of his ambition. But Benny's fire could not be confined to partnerships and he eventually broke away from his ally, setting his sight on a new venture the El Dorado on Fremont Street. With a daring move, he took hold of the El Dorado and with a wave of his magic wand, he baptized it as the Horseshoe. In 1949, shortly after, Nick the Greek set foot in Las Vegas, his heart set on finding the grandest poker game the world has ever seen. With an air of serendipity, Dandelos and Binion connected, their destinies entwined like a perfect poker hand. Binion saw an opportunity to assist Nick the Greek in search of a major challenge. He recognized that his newly owned establishment would be the ideal setting for such a high stakes game. Fortunately, Binion knew the perfect adversary to pit against Nick the Greek. He promptly contacted his longtime friend Johnny Moss who was currently playing poker in Texas. Binion skillfully convinced Johnny to leave his game and travel to Las Vegas to face Dandelos. Binion even offered to provide Moss with the necessary bankroll for the match. In either 1949 or more likely 1951, Johnny Moss arrived in Las Vegas and the epic duel between him and Nick the Greek began. The poker match would last for a significant duration featuring many versions of the game with five card stud being the most notable among them. While various accounts may differ on some details, certain aspects of this legendary match stand out like shining diamonds. The stakes were not for the faint of heart. The pot in a particular hand of five card stud, as the stories go, skyrocketed to an astonishing sum, exceeding a jaw-dropping half a million dollars. But the test of nerves was just one part of the grueling duel. The stamina and endurance of both players were put to the ultimate test. Picture this, Johnny and Dandelos going head to head for four or five months straight without a single break. The intensity of the match demanded unwavering focus and a willpower that could withstand the relentless pressure. From time to time, tourists were allowed to participate in the high stakes poker action as well. These visitors had the opportunity to join the game by buying in with a minimum buy-in of $10,000. However, they typically did not stay in the match for extended periods. Their roles in the games were more like temporary guests or supporting cast members as the intensity and the stakes involved were often too overwhelming for them to sustain prolonged involvement. Subscribe to this channel and you will be invited to our exclusive poker night where we play with edible cards and eat our way to victory. One of the most fascinating and captivating aspects of the Moss Dandelos match was the way it drew in curious onlookers. However, this particular detail is difficult to verify as it is shrouded in uncertainty and historical accounts might differ. Binion, the mastermind behind this match, may or may not have anticipated the level of attention and interest it would generate from onlookers. The Mars Dandelos match wasn't just a high stakes poker battle, it became a clever means to boost business for his establishment. As spectators gathered to witness the thrilling clash of poker titans, they couldn't help but be drawn into the electrifying atmosphere of the horseshoe. The spectacle of the game sparked a fire in their hearts, igniting a desire to try their luck at other house games, beckoning them to take their chances in the horseshoe's offerings. It was a stroke of genius by Binion who recognized the opportunity to turn the poker match into a grand marketing spectacle. Legend has it, among the curious onlookers, an unexpected and larger than life figure made an appearance none other than the German-born Nobel Prize winning physicist Albert Einstein. In this imagined tableau, Einstein himself graced the horseshoe with his presence, having relocated to the United States to spend his final years. Amidst the poker fervor, as the railbirds took a break from the poker action, Nick the Greek played tour guide to the iconic physicist. 
in an audacious display of humor, he introduced Einstein to the local people as Little Al from Princeton, a whimsical moniker for the scientific genius. The authenticity of this tale is highly doubtful. The idea of Einstein roaming the Vegas streets, mingling with gamblers, certainly stretches the bounds of plausibility. Nonetheless, it serves as a fascinating addition to the colorful lore surrounding the legendary match between Johnny Moss and Nick Dandelos. After a grueling battle that lasted for an estimated 4 or 5 months, the epic poker encounter between Dandelos and Moss had reached its climax. As the legend goes, Nick finally rose from his chair, a mix of emotions etched across his face, and addressed his formidable opponent with a simple yet decisive statement. Mr. Moss, I have to let you go. Nick is said to have taken an early advantage, but ultimately, Johnny would end well ahead, and in most versions, Johnny Moss is reported to have taken more than $2 million off his opponent. Despite its magnitude and the legendary status it has received, there are indeed some puzzling discrepancies and missing details that cast doubt on its authenticity. One of the primary issues lies with the location. Johnny claimed that the epic encounter occurred in 1949, however, historical records show that the famous horseshoe did not open its doors until August 14, 1951. This raises questions about the accuracy of the timing and the exact venue where the match allegedly took place. Adding to the intrigue is the lack of contemporary press coverage about this monumental poker duel. Nick the Greek, being a prominent figure of the era, was often covered in the press, leaving us to wonder why such an epic match against another well-known player wouldn't have received any public attention. Moreover, the information we have about the match comes solely from Johnny Moss's recollections, which he shared decades later. His first account of the supposed heads-up match surfaced in 1971, a staggering 22 years after it was said to have taken place. By that time, Nick the Greek had already passed away in 1966, further complicating the verification of the events. When questioned about the match, Benny Binion remained cryptic, neither confirming nor denying its occurrence, leaving us to grapple with the uncertainty surrounding this intriguing piece of poker history. So did the high-stakes heads-up match between Johnny Moss and Nick the Greek actually happen? Jack Binion, the son of Benny Binion, stepped forward and set the record straight and provided valuable insights into this historic event. According to Jack Binion, the match occurred at the Flamingo, not the Horseshoe, and it was not a public affair, explaining why contemporary press coverage did not capture the momentous event. Johnny Moss, an illustrious poker figure himself, could have mixed up the details of the private match with another high-stakes cash game he played at the Horseshoe, which was attended by a crowd of spectators and multiple high-profile opponents. Even Doyle Brunson confirmed in a tweet that the match indeed took place and Johnny Moss lost all of his winnings shooting craps at the Horseshoe. With Jack Binion's confirmation, the poker community now has a clearer picture of this historic poker encounter. The Johnny Moss Nick the Greek match will forever remain a captivating piece of poker lore, offering a glimpse into the world of high stakes poker and larger than life personalities that shaped its history.